I have no idea how far that deer is. I had no idea. Thought it was 40. Thought it was 40. I missed a deer. And then I watched it cross 300 yards of open field and disappear into my neighbor's yard. Guys, welcome back to Out of Work Outdoors. My name is Connery. Today, I'm going to go over my top five first time bow hunter top five mistakes that I made in my first season bow hunting. So let's get this thing started. Um, if you're watching this, you might be a seasoned vet, and I please help me out. If you're a new guy, hopefully you are not gonna make these uh, same mistakes I did in my first season. Cause I feel now I'm very prepared for the second season, but for season number one, I was kind of I was caught off guard. I was caught off guard a lot. And a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of people, the forums, a bunch of people on Facebook did not tell you all this stuff. At least I didn't get it, okay? I, I felt like going in, I felt like I was, you know, mentally prepared for what was going to happen. But until it happens to you, you really don't know. I'm going to go through these top fives, not in a particular order, but in the order that I caught myself slipping in during the season. So the number one is going to be the first problem I had. And number five is going to be the last problem I had. And all these problems were solved. Feel very confident going into season number two. But season number one was high expectations, low outcome. Number The first problem I ran into was I felt that I had enough time behind the bow. The crossbow. I was using a crossbow. The reality is I didn't. Okay, so I had probably fired this crossbow mm, 200 times. To be realistically, maybe 200 times I fired this crossbow. Just to get, you know, the muscles and get, you know, the feel of the crossbow, how the scope works, how the trigger works, and all this other stuff, right? And how to make it silent and, you know, all that stuff. But I did not have enough time on an actual, like, Occurrence of you seeing a deer. I was just shooting targets the whole time and we never shot I had a decoy a foam decoy and I shot it once or twice, but it's completely different from where you're shooting a deer 30 yards standing You have the, all the time in the world versus a live animal Completely different completely different and you're always setting the the decoy up like broadside the real animal comes in it is whatever okay it is whatever take the best shot you can get I also noticed that I wasn't very patient okay so when the deer came in I was super excited that okay it presented me with a decent shot but if I had just waited maybe another 30 seconds or so it could have possibly presented the perfect shot now did not have enough time playing with the elements so I, I had no idea uh, how much wind influences the flight path of the arrow, how it can shift it off five or six inches in extreme weather, all the above. I didn't have any of that. So that's number one. That is definitely number one. Not enough practice, not enough uh, experience behind the bow through different uh, weather and things like that. So that's number one. Guys, if you if you like hunting and fishing and that type of stuff, uh, be sure to sub to the channel. That's what we do here. A lot of raw fishing, hunting. It's a good times. So, a bunch of these videos coming down the pipeline too. So, you don't want to miss them all. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell notification. Help us out. And you don't forget to give me the thumbs up too. While you're at it. Number two is shot placement. You read on the internet that... Go ahead and pick the best broadhead you can pick. Or pick this one, pick that one. There's tons of debates. But at the end of the day, it comes down to shot placement. Everyone's always saying, you know, just just get that uh, blade that opens up, or that broadhead that opens up. And when you hit this deer, especially from an elevated position, when you hit them, there's going to be blood everywhere. You'll definitely see a blood trail. Yada, yada, yada. Give it an hour, two hours maybe. Go and find them. You'll be all right. 
That's wrong. That is wrong. Because shot placement is everything. Shot placement is everything. So take your time. Perfect shot, please. Number three. Number three is tuning your equipment. Okay? Tuning your equipment. So my crossbow likes a certain bolt. Okay? And when my cousin gave it to me, he gave me these two bolts that looked relatively cheap right i'm not gonna name any brands but they look pretty cheap so i go to my sports and hardware store sports and outdoors store and i pick up the most expensive bolts right so i get that and i get like some pretty cool looking bra heads and i start shooting them and it is grouping completely different from the two that he handed me so i said uh that's not cool so i go back to the store i just buy some medium grade ones right I shoot those and they're grouping completely different also like one group will group here another group groups about 12 inches to the right another group kind of groups straight up six inches okay so the grouping is really far this is only at about 25 yards okay so that was very eye-opening to me you gotta start learning about FLC or forward of center uh, after I missed two or three years I was kind of like this there's something wrong like the way the arrow is flying, you want a really high FOC, period. 100 grain broadheads, not gonna work. 120, 150s, some people are saying 200s, okay? So I shot at, okay, five deers. I missed two completely. I completely missed two at 35 yards, right? And I hit three. I heard the, I heard the whack, the whack, I heard it. Still can't find three of them. I still can't find three of them. And I, like, till this day, I still don't know exactly why. I'm just going to blame it on FOC was off. Because if even even if you're shooting one arrow over and over. Because at one point I was so confused. Because all my arrows were not grouping right. And I took my entire crossbow apart. And I loctited everything just to keep things, like, super consistent. And even at that, even if I'm just shooting the same bolt over and over, like I, I shoot it at my target, I go pull it out, come back and shoot it again. And it was not, it just wasn't grouping consistent. Okay, so, and that was from the cheap arrows, the medium arrows, and the expensive arrows. Because they weren't, they weren't tuned. Okay, so that's something that I learned the hard way. So then I started playing with, uh, uh, different arrows because you know, different bolts some bolts come FLC real low FLC like 10% but some bolts come FLC already 15 so that when you put your broadhead on it it brings the FLC even farther out right that's how I explain it okay so when you put a 125 150 grain head on it it is like a 20% FLC which is what I learned towards the end of the season all my bolts are tuned like that now, and they're flying super consistent. I'm shooting like one inch groups at 20 yards. It opens to like a two inch group at 40. So now I'm doing so good, but I learned all this towards the end of the season. So all the dumb deer are now smart deer, and they don't come around no more. And I, number four. So number four is broadhead tuning, which is like, I had to break that off into a mini topic in itself because broadhead tuning is super, super weird because I was playing with this for about a week. So I started off with a hybrid head and then I bought a fixed blade and then I bought a fully mechanical and then I came back to the hybrid flick, the hybrid blade, okay? Because the craziest part was the impact shifts were so crazy. So I took my best batch of arrows that I bought, which were actually the cheaper ones, right? Well, actually the medium grade ones. They were grouping the best with field points, right? So, so I would just say, mostly everybody was going to say, oh, don't worry about it. You know, field points and bra heads should hit pretty close to the same thing. Wrong. In my experience, there's a four inch shift in broadheads when I put broadheads on my arrows my arrows shift four inches to the right I don't know why but they would all shift four inches consistently to the right at about 20 yards 
And I was just like mad because up until that point, until that point where I verified if the broadheads and the field points were impacting the same area, I never tested it. So I just zeroed on uh, field points and I screwed the broadheads on and I went hunting. And that explains why I did not hit anything. Where if I did, it wasn't good shot placement. Like I said, number two was shot placement. So from that point on, I got so mad. I said, look. I got four arrows or four boats. I'll put four broadheads on it. I'm going to shoot them all to my foam target. And I'm just going to zero with that complete package. And I'm actually going to use all four arrows during hunting. And I took them back and I resharpened up all the blades, right? So that's what I did. And I feel super confident about that. But then I started getting into situations where... The deer were kind of running around me and all this other stuff. And they kind of knew that I was in the general area. Or they didn't come to the feeder no more. Because there's a season for that. They don't come to the feeders. And I had to stalk and shoot deer. Two events. Two events I had to do that. Number five that I noticed about myself. Is as a new guy coming in. Um, I didn't want to buy everything that I had to buy. I never bought that laser range finder. A lot of times I'm shooting these deers uh, at the deer feeder, right? 25 yards. During the rut, they didn't come to the feeder no more. They were just wandering, right? So I got this one afternoon where a buck comes out of nowhere. And I know to the deer feeder, I know I've measured it, but I haven't measured it the other direction, right? So deer comes out of the wood line and it's broadside staring at me looking dumb as possible and i have no idea how far that deer is i had no idea thought it was 40 thought it was 40 i missed the deer and then i watched it cross 300 yards of open field and disappear into my neighbor's yard kind of mad i was kind of mad i was kind of mad i was actually really mad and then i was like all right that will never ever happen again there goes my day so then I load up another boat and I continue to sit and 15 minutes later another buck comes out like same exact spot. So I'm thinking alright so I missed at when I had the uh, drop compensator at 40 and I missed him high so it's definitely not 40 so it's got to be 30. So I put it on, on 30 I fire again and I oh yeah whack. I got him. Takes off. And I give it an hour and a half. I try to go find him. No blood trail. Nothing. So now I'm just real mad, right? I'm just real mad. Because I didn't know how far that deer was from me. So, would a laser rangefinder fix that problem? Yeah, it could. But it was another 150 bucks. I didn't want to spend. So I kind of wanted to train my eyes. Like, if you could train your eyes, this is what all the veteran guys are saying, you need to learn how to feel out, like, range. If you don't, man, what if you forget your range finder that day? Completely, you completely jacked like I was. Right, so, anyways, that's my top five. I had, that was the first year I actually pursued deer uh, on my property. A couple weeks before the season, we already had, you know, corn and stuff like that, I had cameras out and everything. And then I wanted to see what actually happened during the course of the season. And I was out there almost every day. I was almost almost every day. So out of the four months, I think four months, the deer season was open. From October, November, December, and January. Three and a half months, I would say I was out there 60 days. Like, not even kidding you. 60 days. There was a moment in time during the... Pre-rut, rut, I was out there 14 days straight. Alright. So I was pretty dedicated. I wanted to learn this deer thing really, really hard. And uh, those are the mistakes I made. You know, these are the mistakes I made during the season. And I can promise you, those mistakes are not going to be made again next year. I saw a lot of deer this year. I've seen, I've seen, like, with my eyes, probably probably 30 to 40 deer probably 30 to 40 a lot of them were out of range don't get me wrong we're, we're, we're bow guys uh horrible season in terms of harvest amounts but had an excellent season 
learning the craft okay so that's actually that's actually what i wanted to put down on video before before the season completely just leaves my mind because we haven't been hunting for the last five or six days seasons already ended with that being said uh hope you guys uh like that i hope you guys don't make the same mistakes i made as a first year deer hunter bow hunter and i'm addicted to now so i didn't get any buck fever but man i understand why people do it it is uh it's basically it's a very challenging thing i had a gun during gun season i brought it out and i could have easily shot this doe at a hundred yards and another time at a hundred and maybe 75 and i knew if i pulled the trigger it was done thought about it thought about it thought about it and then i didn't pull the trigger so because it, it didn't feel like it didn't feel like i earned it so that's about it guys that's it for the video hope you guys enjoyed it let me know if you guys like these topics we'll definitely talk more about them and uh we'll see you on the next one